Well then, Bunny. Yes. This week, we are finally, finally getting around to doing a legendarily bad movie. Yes. A legendary film in the annals, in the anuses of bad film history. But before we get there, a quick word on bad movies from a bad movie historian whose name is me. Uh Uh-huh. Because it's me. Is why. So there are two types of bad movies, uh, generally. And just for for the sake of argument, uh, we we will... Let's classify these two, these specific two types of bad movies. So we'll, we'll call... We'll call the two types of bad movies type A Uh and type skull fucking asshole shit rag. Okay. So just 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 to say, just so we have some kind of a handle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just to make it easier for the listening audience. There's two types of bad movies, type A and type skull fucking asshole shit rag. So type A Type A, these are the, the bad movies that are really fun to watch. Plan 9, The Room, Mano oh. with Mystery Science Theater. These are bad movies, sure, but there's something really fun about them, you know? It's bad, and yet it's also a pleasure to watch. That is Type A. Well, it, it fits in a whole class of kind of things that you can enjoy you can enjoy a, a bad movie okay yeah. and you could like hot sauce you know yeah yeah so both cuz they're kind of bad you know yeah 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 so so that's type a now let's talk about the other type which i have dubbed Type skull fucking asshole shit rag. Just to be clear, not bag. Okay? Yeah. I mean skull fucking asshole shit bag. Now that just sounds silly. Yes, it does. Skull fucking asshole shit rag, or SFAS for short. Safas. 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 Safas it to say. Yeah. These are the movies that are just bad there's nothing really fun about them it is not a pleasure to watch in fact watching it is just a chore yeah and these tend to be your money grabs yeah uh yeah so uh all of the transformers movies Uh titanic uh some people might say batman and robin (laughs) and uh yeah these watching these movies is a chore or homework or a painful marathon of endurance. Guess what this week's film is? <laughs> type A, yeah, or type Safas. Yes, it's Safas, obviously. So before we get in, before we end the introduction, I would like to offer up a bit of a warning. This week's movie is bad. Yes, but not, is. but not bad in the sense of oh, this will be fun. Me and my buddies will get together and we'll 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 have like a few beers and we'll make fun of it. No, this is real bad. This is really real bad. This is deep hurting. <laughs> yes, this is really really bad, guys. And as such, I I just have to come out and say it. This film can only be watched by a bad movie professional. Um, I would think so. This isn't something that you can just drop on someone. This is something that someone has to be trained for. A bad movie trained professional like Bunny and I. Oh, this will be a fun movie to watch. I'll just pop it on, smoke a bowl, rip on the movie. No, you can't do that. You know why? Because next thing you know, bam! You just Kurt cobain yourself. Yes. That is how bad this movie is, okay? Only trained professionals can watch this week's movie, the 1980 cinematic abortion known simply as 
The Apple. The Apple. And just to be, just to be clear, all of that shit about trained professionals, that is no joke. Let me tell you about this weekend. Okay. Bella and I are watching The Disaster Artist. We are watching the film, and it's a lot of fun. She hadn't seen The Room before, but she 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 knows that Mommy and I are constantly quoting The Room, constantly quoting Tommy Wiseau, and so she wants to watch the film and try and get a handle on what the deal is with The Room and why it's so popular. I, and I also told her that James Franco and his brother from uh, 21 Jump Street are in it, and so she liked that aspect so we're watching the film we're watching the movie and afterwards natasha's like oh was that good we're like yeah it was really good she said oh was that this week's film and i say no that wasn't this week's film this week's film is is is, is just worse than the room yeah because the room is fun to watch and this week's film is just a a a painful chore yes it is in fact, you know what? I'm going to watch that again for like the third or fourth time. I'm going to watch that again at home. So we're at home and I put the movie on. Yeah. At no point in time did I ever say, hey, Bella, you need to watch this with me. <laughs> at no is it, point in time. Is it I, more like. These, this is what you, as a parent, have to steer her away from. At no point in time did I say, "Oh man, Bella, this this week's movie is horrible. You got to watch this. You got to sit down and watch this with me. Let's watch it together." Because I know this film, uh huh, is is a really, really, real bad movie that can only be watched by a bad movie professional, and I didn't want to put that on her. Mm-hmm. So I didn't tell her she had to. She just took it upon herself that she thought she had to. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. And she sat there and watched the film and watched the entire film. And halfway through the film, I took a picture of her face. (laughs) And it's, it's basically... I would liken it to you're watching a Spider-Man movie and it's that part where Spy- where Peter Parker is finally standing up to Flash Thompson yes. and Sp- Spider-Man says something that really pisses off Flash Thompson and right before Flash Thompson uh, starts swinging, he makes this pissed off face. That's the face Bella had through most of this movie. Ah, okay. It got to the point where I was trying to talk her down by going, okay, Bella, there's only like uh, 48 minutes left. That's about two episodes of Gravity Falls. You could do that, right? Watch two episodes of Gravity Falls. And she's like, thank you, Dad. Thank you. (laughs) It was basically just a fucking marathon because that's how horrible this movie is. Yeah. But oh my God, oh my God, it I basically tortured my daughter, but it wasn't torture because I, I, because Natasha was there. I went into the kitchen to get another drink and, and Natasha said, why are you torturing Bella with this? And I'm like, I never told her she had to. I never forced this on her. She's watching this on her own. Yes. So I just took a picture of her face and there were a couple of times when the movie upset her so much that she grabbed one of the pillows on the couch and was just screaming into it (laughs) because she was so upset. And sometimes the musical numbers were just so embarrassing that she would just be covering her face like she would have her her face in her hands because she just couldn't take it. She's like, oh, my God, like like is this. Is this a dream? Is this a nightmare? Am I in hell? (laughs) She could not handle it. So I posted that Bella and I were watching uh, the Apple and that it was really bad. And I posted that on my Facebook. If you want to see the pictures, I posted it on my Facebook. And then for comments, I posted two pictures of Bella losing the movie. (laughs) 
absolutely lost it. She lost it. I, I, I'm going to have to call that a win. Yeah, but she got through the entire movie, and at the end of the film, she's like, wait, what the hell is happening? I had to explain it to her. It's the rapture, Bella. Yes. So, and while we're on the subject of Apple stories, this movie uh, taught me a very important lesson about myself. Yes. What was that? It taught me that I have limits. Uh, yes, as we all do. Because uh, I have a habit of liking things just out of spite. <laughs> okay. I think that's one of the reasons why I pushed Rock of Ages so hard on my family. Uh huh. You guys gotta sit down. This film's amazing. This film is the best. And I'm like downloading the soundtrack and I'm listening to the, to the soundtrack of Rock of Ages and constantly talking about Rock of Ages. We're driving in the, you know, we're driving somewhere and Natasha's changing the radio and Wanted Dead or Alive comes on and I'm like, oh man, this this is a great song i love arsenal stacy jacks is a god yeah. you know i saw him play at the whiskey room on sunset yeah it was like 87 was, it was so it was before he got sober yeah it was an amazing concert you know who opened for him wolfgang von colt yeah oh you never hear from wolfgang von colt anymore yeah what happened to this yeah I, I i mean it's it's bad but you really gotta call them a one-hit wonder don't you i would imagine wolfgang colt now is a talking head occasionally making jokes on some true tv show uh-huh world world stupidest criminals and you just see wolfgang von colt there <laughs> he saw he could Feel the whole ATM. Talk about a knucklehead. And now he would be played by the kid from The Big Bang Theory that you were talking about last week, David from Roseanne. Oh, yeah. You mean, uh, uh, it, it upsets me that you do not remember his name. A name that I totally remember. <laughs> yeah. It upsets me that you've forgotten his name, especially since, you know, the Renaissance is happening. <laughs> Square dancing. Um, I keep wanting to say Jared Padalecki, but that's just because of freaking uh, Supernatural is on right now. But it's uh, very similar to that. Yeah. It's not Johnny. Jared Padalecki, but it's... Oh, uh... uh Johnny Galecki, the Galekasans. Johnny Galecki, yes. Johnny Galecki. Yeah, the Galekasans is coming. 100% serious about that. So here are some stats on the Apple. The Apple was a 1980s bomb that only slightly makes sense from Canon Pictures. Yes. A ridiculously cheesy 70s and primarily 80s movie studio that brought us such high class award winning motion pictures as Ninja 3, The Domination, Break Into Electric Boogaloo and the Academy Award winning film Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Yes. Canon Pictures was primarily run by two Israeli cousins named Menahem Golan and Yoram Globus, who, at least in my mind, are both the wild and crazy guys from Saturday Night Live. Yes. That actually, that, that analogy just basically explains every movie they ever did. You watch And, and their costuming, I can totally see it. Yeah, yeah. You see these films and you're like, okay, this is really conf this is a really confusing film, but it makes sense when you're going when you when you picture Golan Globus in oh. Canon Pictures going, you know what this movie needs more big American breasts. Yes, yes, I could totally see it. I I, I was seeing I was seeing something like, you are one foxy chick. Yeah, we will cast you in this big budget Hollywood Hollywood movie. Yeah, 
Uh, we will be directing Missing in Action 3 with our big bulges. <laughs> we are two wild and crazy movie producers. <laughs> so, in interestingly enough, uh, Golan and Globus bought the failing Canon Pictures Company in 1979. Canon Pictures was in such dire financial straits that they bought Canon Pictures for only $500,000. Oh. So interestingly enough, the story of the making of the Apple starts actually way before Golan Globus gained control of Canon Pictures. So the story goes, in 1975, an Israeli rock star named Kobe Recht okay. signed on to a major label, but the experience effed him so bad. And it's this major label, and it, the 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 head of the major label is just such a freaking douchebag and it's just such a horrible experience for him that that this Israeli rock star Kobe Wretched and his wife immediately started writing a musical play about his experiences okay but his version was set in the future and it was real Orwellian he described it as 1984 with disco music All right. Which you so, can describe this with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, so well, by. Well, you would have to add for dummies. Yeah, yeah. So by 1977, they had written a musical play and had recorded a crap ton of demos. I think there were 17 demos. Originally, it was going to be a stage concert musical thingy that was in Israel. All the songs were in Israeli. Yeah. Uh, but they were like, oh, this this is too much. This is too expensive. There's no way that we can do this it's like a stage play. Like no one would afford to be able to do this big, huge play that we've written. So wondering what to do with their play, it turns out that uh, Menahim Golan, who was a director at the time, a fairly successful director, he was in town. So they meet, they discuss. I'm assuming they had a nosh. Yeah. And boom, the idea uh, uh, came into fruition. We're going to make a movie, a movie on your uh, musical. So in 1979, uh, Kobe Wretched and his wife and Menahim Golan moved to L.A. and they start working on the play. So while they're in L.A., Golan gets the script that Kobe Wretched has already written and he rewrites the script. And then he rewrites it again. And then he rewrites it again. Yeah. And then he rewrites it again. He ends up writing six different copies of this script. He's complete. He completely removes the 1984 aspects. Just completely fucking removes. Uh, so much of what Kobe Wretched has written. For all we know. Uh, Golan completely fucked with the possible good script that Kobe Wretched wrote. We don't know. Yes. So basically, the entire movie is, in my mind at least, this entire film is what a rich and possibly coked up Israeli man thinks is cool. <laughs> yes. That really does help put the film into its proper context. Yeah. You know, this is what like a overweight middle aged Israeli man with way too many gold chains thinks is cool. <laughs> I I would have to agree with that assessment. Yeah. The film was shot entirely in West Berlin in 1979, which really does give it like a weird, creepy aspect. Yes. And it was released in 1980. Originally, the script was heavy on or Orwellian, futuristic, dystopian, who's he, what's it, yowzers. And then uh, Golan comes in and rewrites it into a very, very heavily religious, biblical allegory. In the original script that uh, Golan wrote, huge portions of the script were set in heaven, 
where our Adam is created and he lives in heaven with angels and apparently dinosaurs for some fucking reason. And there's two musical numbers in heaven. And that's how the movie starts out. Like the first 10, 15, 20 minutes is all in heaven. And, and uh, there's more scenes that are filmed that are in heaven. And then eventually God sends our Adam to earth to meet his Eve. But Golan ended up cutting a shit ton of the biblical allegory crap because he wanted the, the film to be quote, more acceptable yeah so you mean to tell me that this is the more acceptable version of the apple the more acceptable cut yes so the film makes you really curious doesn't it yeah yeah really makes you think like what was in this before that this was the stuff that you left in (laughs) yes (laughs) the film was a huge bomb and i've got some reviews Uh, The Mountain Express newspaper called it, quote, truly the strangest sight your eyes have ever beheld. Yeah. The movie report. This one's my favorite. The movie report said, quote, if you believe in God, be prepared to question his existence. (laughs) Because basically no loving deity would allow this film to happen. Yeah. A slant magazine called it noxious. Every song in this goddamn movie sucks. <laughs> oh, so I forgot. I forgot my point earlier. So apparently I have a limit. There are some things that I like out of spite. So Bella hated this movie so much that I started spiting her by singing the opening number over and over again to her. Oh, just like Bella. the freaks. Yeah. Hey, Bella. Hey, Bella. B- <laughs> there ain't no good there ain't no bad so i downloaded the opening song and i put it on my phone and i heard it maybe like two or three times until i'm like i tap out i can't do this like even i have limits <laughs> like i never thought i'd say this especially since i'm currently rocking out to a freak like me needs company from the musical spider-man turn off the dark but apparently even i can't rock out to music from the apple yes apparently i have a limit so this film taught me a good thing about my limitations and also just the fact that i like things just to piss people off there's that says something but i'm not sure what (laughs) flavor wire said that this film was quote the product of a singular insane vision unperturbed by any notion of good taste good sense or good storytelling and uh, I, would here are two to, of, I would have to agree with that as well. Yeah. Here are two of my favorite quotes. Isabella Galindo was quoted as saying, I hate it so much. This movie is my own personal hell. <laughs> if hell is torture, then my own personal hell would be having to watch this film over and over again. Unquote. And my favorite quote, Bunny Williams with the Pope on Film podcast said, huh. You want that now? Yeah. I thought you were going to pull from a previous podcast. So I was excited nope. to hear what I was going to say. No, we don't have a we don't have a historian. So oh, is... it's, it's, it's just so fucked up. It's just it. <sighs> it, it, it it's a bunch of tripe thrown into a hat and pulled out randomly and stuck together. In that regard, it's it's very Rock of Ages, but I think even in Rock of Ages, they cared. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I upset. So none I... of this, none of this works on yeah. any level, but then it does. If you want to watch yeah. a bad movie. Yeah. I really, ups- I upset my wife. We had a little bit of a talk like halfway through this film. Cause I said, uh, I know I'm going to piss off somebody in this house by saying this, but I'm just going to come out and say it. This film is way too gay. <laughs> okay. And then Natasha said, that doesn't exist. Such a thing does not exist. And I'm like, yeah, well, you've never tried to see the apple. (laughs) 
the apple makes the village people's can't stop the music look like uh, Val Kilmer and Heat. Yes. Makes it look like uh, Liam Neeson and Taken. <laughs> yes. Makes it makes uh, the village people look like the movie Dunkirk. <laughs> Angry badass guys going into war. But 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 here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. Okay, buddy. Yes. Okay, buddy. Hear me out. Hear me out. Yes, this movie sucks. Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, 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 Menahim Bolan was quoted when the mo- after the movie bombed. He was quoted as saying, quote, It's impossible that I'm so wrong about this film. I cannot be that wrong about this movie. They just don't understand what I was trying to do. So, okay. so, <laughs> so I started thinking about that, and, and that's when it hit me. Yes, the movie sucks. Yes, yes this is a horrible, just horror, horror, horror. The thing goes. <laughs> so, so the movie is horrible, uh-huh. but like, like there's a little like thing in my gut that tells me that the problem with this film is just that it came out in the eighties. Yes. If this film came out in 1976, 77, 78, it could have had a chance. Yeah. Around Godspell or something like that. Yeah. But this movie came out when people were starting to 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 play Pac-Man and play with Rubik's Cubes. This movie should have come out when uh, David Bowie is putting on makeup and pretending to be a spider from Mars and getting a blowjob from Mick Jagger. <laughs> The apple should have come out when, you know, when the Rocky Metcalf Horror. Metcalf gun. There was a Metcalf, Metcalf gun show commercial. Gun show. Nice. That is that is an old take. Metcalf gun show. The Metcalf yes. gun show. I, Metcalf I, gun show. I remember it actually. Apparently, the Metcalf gun show is back. So this film just came out at the wrong time. This film needed to come out when disco was still a thing. If this film came out 76, 77, 78, it could have had a chance. People would have saw this film and go, oh, yeah, no, this is kind of fun. I like it. But yeah. it came out in 1980. So, oh, this film can exist within the 80s. <laughs> yeah. There's just there's just I no way. I completely agree. And, and that's 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 it. That's the problem with this movie is that it's it's out of. Everything about it is out of place. So yeah. yes, they would they would look good if if like Xanadu was still a thing and right. Olivia Newton John was still a thing. You know, but they're not. <laughs> yeah. So fucking good. Oh, I'm glad that you liked it. And I I, I was I was trying to do the twist wasn't clear. It was just to be clear, I was doing Just a. To be clear. I was doing the force on you, and I wasn't mimicking grabbing the your fact beautiful that you butt. Wanted to grab my ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't lie. You ain't got a lie to kick it. I'm confused as to what that means, but I'm gonna just take it at face value. <laughs> this film just came out at the wrong time. Yes. That's the problem. You can't That's really a big problem with it. Yes, and and for a religious analogy that you have taken out, you, you're really quite having. Yeah, you can't release a campy '70s disco musical at the end of the year 1980. Yeah, like oh no, you're already done. You're already done. Big shock. So yes, in a in a way, 
it wants to be a midnight movie like Rocky Horror. Yeah. 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 I I find it a sadistic kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Golan and Globus, or whatever their names are, they're, they're a tough read. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Is there a heart there, or is there not? Or, or are they trying to really do something, or is it, or is it really all just a money grab? Yeah, you know, it's and difficult. it's so hard to say with them. Yeah, it's difficult to tell. Yeah, but they, I, I, I will say that I watched this film this week, and I hated it. Last week, and I hated it. And then I watched it with Bella, and I had fun watching it with Bella because she hated it. Okay. And then I watched it again by myself, and it was just, and I hated it. So it's one of those things where it's like, I hate it so much, but I will love forcing it on someone else. Well, it's like, it's like a paper cup. You know? It yeah. hurts, but you kind of have to keep fucking with it. Yeah. You know? There's yeah. just something I mean, about it. You can't just let it sit there and heal. It, it's yeah. it's sort of a pain that we, we're kind of like. Yeah. So anyway, that's all I got for this movie. It's a, it's a piece of shit, but it's it, it at least it's an original and unique piece of shit. I'm going to put this in a party movie, a, a movie party category. You know, this would be yeah. a fun movie. You invite a bunch of people over for a party and you just put this shit on the background. Yeah. Maybe. So, but there has to be a trained professional with you. Yes. Yes. Because right, I really can't know that it is. It's still not for novices, and people can't do this on their own. No way. Yeah, I really needed to talk Bella down. <laughs> if you watch this movie, that's, that's like sick. for real. Yeah, I, I would have think. I would think that if, if anybody can handle it, Bella can handle it. Yeah, and she she did watch it from beginning to end. It just almost broke her. Yeah. That's that's sick. Yeah. Give her my condolences and, and you know, once you once you fall off the horse though, you gotta get like right back on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's all I've got for this week. Next week we have to watch the disaster artist. Okay. Because I have got a lot to say. Not only that, but I scored an interview. With an old friend of mine, we used to work together at the bookstore in California. Yeah. And then he left the store in California and moved to Oakland for a while. And when he lived in Oakland, he he was working at that theater when they first got uh, they first started showing the room. Uh huh. And they said, oh, yeah, this is just some bad movie, and we're going to be playing it once a month at midnight, and the director's going to be here. This is supposed to be uh, a wonderful, bad film. Let's put let's put the reels on. And so, yeah, no, he would watch it once a month, and he, he was there watching the, the crowds get bigger, and he would meet Tommy Wiseau and, yeah. and talk to him and stuff. And, and so it, I was on Facebook talking about the disaster artist, and he ended up giving me some really good quotes for the show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. Some really good stuff for the show. So that's next week, The Disaster Artist. And for homework, 1959, a 12-minute educational short, really short guy called The Troublemaker. Also next week, also next week, I'm trying to go old school. So next week, I have... Um, uh, Steve's historical approximations. We're going to be talking about the Bible. Okay. And, and I've got a game for next week. 
Oh, we haven't played a game in a long time. I know, it's been a while, and I got a really good one for next week Yeah, that I'm really proud of. I tried it on Amber, and Amber's like, I have no idea what's going on, but I think I'm doing good. <laughs> so she did really good, despite not knowing anything about the subject. So that's going to be fun. I think this will be uh, this will be uh, a, this is a good game for you. I tried to tailor this to you. Okay, cool. So I think you'll like it. So that's next week. Now, though, looking back at this episode, now that we are here at the end, at, at the pinnacle, at the peak of podcasting perfection, really. Yeah. Perfect. Uh-huh. I got to say, I think when all is said and done, I think this has been a pretty damn good episode. This has been a, a, a damn good episode. Yes, it has. Yeah. On fire. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do schwaffles and poopy tits. Okay, come back here. 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 I was telling Bunny earlier about how you watched the film The Apple from beginning to end and how it almost broke you. I run so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so tell me about the apple. I know you loved it. What were your favorite parts? Tell me. My favorite part? Yeah, because I you were like crying the whole time. I'm assuming because you just loved it so much. So, what were your favorite parts, Mr. Boogaloo? Or or was his name Mr. Bugaloo? Or was his name Mr. Boogaloo? Or was his name Mr. Bugalow? He had twenty names. My favorite I have multiple favorite parts. My favorite scenes are when the the uh the 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 eyeshadow guy came on. Anytime the eyeshadow guy came on. The black guy? The eyeshadow guy. (laughs) Yeah, I love that black guy. Nice. Yeah, I love it. Hi. Guys, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. Up with the magical, weird-looking yeah, Jesus into the sky. Yeah. Oh yeah. So everybody else on the earth can live a normal life. Yeah. yeah. I know you love the film. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to pretend that you hated it. I know you loved it. It's it's like a wise man once said. There ain't no good. There ain't no bad. <laughs> Bim, is, Bella, Bim is on the way. Yes. It sucks because I know a freaking. You know someone named Bim? I know Bim? somebody named Bim. Really? Bim Trevor. His name is Bim? Bim he was Trevor. probably named after the apple. You know no, what you should do every no. time you see this Bim guy? Just throw apples at him. Just yeah. throw apples at him. And he'll be like, yeah, thank you. It's an FYI. He's definitely named after the apple. She said, I hate you and stormed off. That's what the apple does to people. Yes, it does. But if I had if I had children, I think I would name one Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh do 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 do